I'll be talking about teaching AI to see the 3D world, and I'll be showing some work we've been developing in the scene representation group here at MIT, um, led by Professor Vincent Sitzman. I want to start by showing you a video of a person driving their car in the streets of Mumbai in India. And while you watch this, I want you to appreciate and think about the complexity of human reasoning that is required to navigate in this world. Let me stop this right here. So you can see that there are pedestrians on the street. There are all these kinds of objects. There's an object in the sky. Um, there, there are pedestrians walking around their cars. Could there possibly be objects behind the cars? There could be vehicles coming from behind the cars. There's this person dragging a car that has some weirdly shaped objects. So in order to navigate in this world as a human, we have to really build a picture of the 3D world uh, from just these uh, observations. So we really have to think how far these pedestrians are from us. We have to think about what could be the possible uh, things that could lie behind the objects that we are seeing. And we also have to uh, build a reason about the behaviors of all these uh, entities. So where could the pedestrians possibly move in the future? And from these rich models we build from these observations, we really figure out how to take action in the scene and move forward. Let me just quickly contrast with what a self-driving system would do. So these systems are really impressive, but if uh, they are in unusual circumstances, like it sees a carriage in front of it, it gets really confused. Is it a pedestrian in front of a truck? Well, it doesn't really know. So this kind of uh, world models that we really build from these observations are what we call spatial AI. And self-driving is just one of the examples where this kind of technology can be useful. In general, there are like these three general categories of applications um, of this kind of methods. So we have computer graphics where we really want to understand and build 3D models of the world such that we can interact and edit them to creatively express ourselves. We have computer vision, which is more like what the self-driving system needs, where given observations, we really want to build rich models of what's really going on in the scene. And we have robotics where once we have some 3D understanding, how do we really learn to plan and manipulate the world? Before I get more in these applications, let's take a brief look at the current state of AI. So we've had really significant breakthroughs uh, in AI. And in the image domain, we have seen a lot of progress where we can now understand what each pixel of an image could, uh, what, what they really mean. We have methods that can generate images at really high quality, but most of the, prox uh, most of the progress has been in 2D. We don't really have method, uh, methods that can take an image and really tell us about the underlying 3D scene that is defined by these images. So how do we move from um, learning in 2D to learning in 3D? And I want to give you just one brief insight on what, uh, what is required to enable this. And this is uh, about how we need to think about how images are really created. So if I have a camera in front of me um, and I take a picture right here, um, how is this image being generated? So there are many light sources in the image. You have lights on the top, they're on the back. Um, the light uh, originates from there. It hits all the different objects, the chairs, the people, and it finally reaches the camera. The sensor recalls all the photons, it collects it, and that's how the image is generated. And we can uh, write physical equations that govern this image formation process. So if we endow our um, AI systems with this knowledge of how images are really created, we can enable um, reasoning about the 3D world just by analyzing images. And here's a very high level overview of what some of our methods that we developed look like. So the AI systems we developed take images as input, um, and they figure out a 3D scene, um, 3D scene representations that really define the image. Um, these 3D representations are part of our neural networks, so our neural networks really learn to reason about, uh, about, about the scenes in 3D. Uh, just like a, an image can be represented as a regular grid of 2D pixels, you can think of the 3D scene being represented as a regular grid of 3D voxels, so if I have a voxel here, it just really says I'm empty here. If you have a voxel there, it says um, this is the podium. Um, we learn these methods uh, using something we call neural rendering. So just as I said, like we have image formation models. So we, once we have the 3D scene, we can try to compute images from the 3D scene from different cameras. So we can arbitrarily choose a camera. This is how the image would look like if the scene looked like this. And we can have another camera, and this is how the um, image would look like from that other perspective. So during training, we show our model uh, these different perspectives of scenes, and the model really learns to lift these 2D observations into 3D. Uh, when it is learned, then we can uh, do whatever we want with these 3D um, understandings. So for example, here, we can just arbitrarily move the camera around in the scene and generate these videos where we can look at objects from the back. So with this um, 
really high level picture of, um, of, of how uh, some of these 3D learning methods work. And there are a lot of details involved, of course, so that the, the real systems, how they're really designed that go from 2D to 3D, how the rendering functions are really implemented. I won't go into that, but just leave you with this really high level picture and move on to how this kind of a system can be used for um, the applications I mentioned earlier. So um, as I said, in computer graphics, uh, we're interested in editing and interacting with scenes. So using the techniques I mentioned before, we can take a set of images, we can go in a scene, we can take our camera and we can move it around the scene and we capture a bunch of images. And using those observations, we can lift the scene into 3D and now we can control the camera as we want. So this, this is like a smooth uh, camera trajectory in the scene. Um, but this just gives us the appearance. What if we want to change the appearance or change the uh, structure of the scene? So it turns out we can not only lift these appearance, the color information, but we can also enable a lot of semantic scene understanding um, in 3D. So in this case, we learned semantic features uh, in 3D such that now that we can uh, search based on a text, we can search for flowers, it identifies the uh, corresponding region in the 3D scene, and now we can go ahead and do our editing. So we can change the appearance of the flowers in this case. And these, uh, are of course, these, these kind of applications are of course very relevant in computer graphics where you really want to create and edit 3D assets. Um, let's look at computer vision. In computer vision, we are interested in more human-like understanding. So take this image of a fire hydrant. So just from the single image, can you think about what this hydrant would look like from the back? It could possibly look like this, maybe this, or maybe this. Um, the, the paint is different in all of these, uh, is these cases, but the geometry looks about right. So we know what, these, what the hydrant could look like from the back. We don't really know exactly what it looks like, but we have uh, we, we know what the distribution of a possible solutions look like. So in a recent paper, we developed a method that can also do this. So given an image, it gives us a distribution over 3D scenes. It gives us uh, the capability of sampling from this distribution, and we can generate multiple 3D scenes that all agree with this image. And I'm showing you the, uh, the depth maps, the geometry, just to show that you can now take this 3D um, object and place it in whatever scene for any application. And finally, in robotics, uh, we try to use these representations to learn to manipulate the real world. So in this case, the robot learns to pick, uh, pick up a mug and place it on this stand. And because we use these uh, rich 3D representations, um, we need very little data to train these methods. So during training, the, the robot only sees a single mug in a single pose, but it can generalize to all these different shapes and poses just because it really understands what the 3D world looks like. So there, are, uh, I, I showed you a few uh, successful examples of how reasoning in 3D can um, enable a lot of exciting applications. Um, but where do we go from here? So again, let's look at this uh, street scene, this time from the south of France, and just try to think about, just from the single snapshot, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure no one of you has uh, been to exactly this place, to this street, um, but still, just from this single image, how much information about the world um, are, you, are, are you capturing, are you building in your head? So we really see that there are these multiple pedestrians, we have these cones, these objects, uh, we have the cars, we have, we have models. We know that like, if I play this video where the pedestrian uh, could possibly move, we can think about where the sun is, we can look at the shadows and think about where the light is coming from. And all this reasoning is just from a single image. And on top of that, like, our human vision system is not specific. We can do the same thing for any general image. Like if you look at any of these images, just try to think about what kind of uh, models of the world you're building by just this single image. So in the soccer case, again, like if we play this video, what would happen? If we were there and we turned our head around, what would we see? Well, the player would be complete and there would be more of the soccer field. In the, in the top right, where the person is walking, we don't really know what the exact depth of the ground is, but we know that it's deep and it's dangerous. So as humans, we really build these rich representations of the world and we use it to um, understand and interact with the world. And our goal in the group is to build AI systems that can similarly learn to infer these um, rich representations of the world from similarly sparse data. And these are the people in the group that work on these problems. It's led by Vincent, who is in Germany to renew his visa. And this is me. Thank you.